It is now time for some Python on hardware. Blink up, blink up, blink up, big news. We have um, Circuit Python 5, which is out, and it also means we are now up to 116 boards. Here's a preview of some of them. Circuit Python 5, what are some highlights? I'm glad you asked. Well, first off, yes, we added a ton more new boards. We really uh, strengthened our NRF52 support. Um, Bluetooth was almost completely reworked. Uh, it's now better than ever. Um, we added um, IMX support for the IMX RT10 10 series. Okay, so all the NXP chips are starting to go in. They're starting to come in slowly, yeah. but surely they do work. People have a TNC4, please try it out. You can um, install CircuitPython on it. Um, so that's new in 5.0. We also added some more. We added STM32 um, support, so STM32 F4 series chips, which are very popular with makers, um, very popular um, in industry as well. So if you have boards that use those chips, uh, you can add those. Um, and, to, and we also uh, sped up a lot of stuff. We Im improved uh, display I/O quite a bit, I think. Uh, some memory management, some back in you know speed ups and, and behind the scenes with how we manage interrupts. So you should see better performance. Uh, it's a really solid release and a lot of improvements. So I definitely recommend people update to five. Okay. Um. New boards, the Nano 33, uh, that's from Arduino, is uh, supported by CircuitPython now. The Circuit Brains Basic and Deluxe, the Feather M7, you already mentioned those, and the SparkFun CMD51 Think Plus. Yeah, we tested well. a bunch of new boards and more coming in like every single week. Okay, um, we also have our new project. This is Piloton, it's an open source bike computer. Um, easiest, best way for you to learn all about Bluetooth and do things like heart rate and miles per hour and um, cadence, cadence and music. it can also get music so it's, it's a demo of like if you have four Bluetooth devices you can connect to all of them at once it's a very powerful Bluetooth demo okay um, here's a couple other shots um, open hardware summit is coming up the badges are completed um, we saw some photos online we'll do an update on our blog but here is one from Drew this is it working with um, all sorts of things. So you've got humidity, pressure, altitude, temperature, um, all sorts of different sensor information that you can get in. It's also wearable, and of course it runs. And all these drivers were ready to go. It's so easy. Yeah. Okay, um, the new board that we wanted to get out is mm -hmm. out. It's sold out instantly. It's probably gonna be a top seller. It is the Feather NRF52840 Blue Fruit Sense. So you can check that out. Sign up, we'll have more in stock very, very soon. Yes, they went fast, but they are going to be very popular, I think, so um, we'll be making tons soon. Okay, um, Python slizzers over to Android. There is a Python for Android application that you can try out. This is um, from the folks over at PyBeware, and also I think the Python Foundation helped fund this. So if you it's wanted cool. to do Python on Android, you could check out there. Uh, the article that we mentioned last week in Hackspace is now online. It's by Drew. It's called Python on Hardware, The Future is Serpentine. And uh, it is, I think, going to be one of the articles that people refer back to and say, oh, I remember when I heard about Python on Hardware, I read it in Hackspace or whatever, and now everything has Python on it. So check that out. It's online. We link to it. Um, the PDF is available, the whole issue, but then sometimes they also post up articles. OK, um, this is kind of neat. This is from Matt. Matt posted this up. Uh, the Tinker Squad decided to um, teach kids Python, and you can see they were using Moo, they were using Circuit Playground, and they were using Circuit Playground Express. So this is Sound and uh, Python all working together, and if these kids can do Python on hardware, you can too. Well, what I like is you can see everybody has different color LEDs on their Circuit Playground, which means each person was able to customize the code. They're not just following the instructions and like pasting in the default, they're then changing it to customize it so like the girl has the pink mattress or sweater. Yeah. Next up, uh, Thea posted up, Thea is doing a new potential project. It's called, uh, well, it's called the big, it's called the big honking buck button. Yeah. And uh, will it run CircuitPython? Yes, for easy hacking. So if you want this, uh, check out the Twitter link and let Thea know that this is a project you would like to see. It's a module, it's a synth, you press the button and it makes a sound. Geek Mom is working on getting Clue to work with the bright wearables, line of wearables. So you can see it here, it's uh, sound reactive, the screen works, plugs in. It's, it's, since it's a micro bit compatible, 
Um, as far as the connector, you can do things like testing, testing, voice activation, one, two, play things three, on the screen, testing, and more. Testing, testing. Speaking of compatibility, we got the little uh, Plenbot from Japan working with the Clue. So um, it was made for Microbit, but since uh, the Clue is in Microbit format, we can use CircuitPython to control this cute little humanoid robot. We'll show a longer video later on in the show. Some Bluetooth controlled psychic paper. Um, this shows, uh, you know, if you're a Doctor Who fan, you know all about this. This is a doctor, and then the um, text shows up as a different doctor, and yes. it's all over. Yes, so they're regenerating. Bluetooth. Yep. It's important if you're if you have multiple different physical and can you know instantiations, you have to have a flexible ID card. Yep. Otherwise, you don't get stuck. Here is Circuit Playground, Cricket, and Circuit Python all working together for this very cool blue fruit cricket robot. Easy, um, effective, cricket. Right. Uh, quick note, um, PyCon just posted up. We are still on for PyCon, it's in April. Um, unknown uh, for everyone how COVID is gonna affect more events, but since it's out in April, they've been working with the folks in Pittsburgh, so far so good. Uh, do check out the PyCon blog, look at their post. I have to hand it to PyCon. They are excellent about giving information to all the attendees, the sponsors, and everyone. If all events did that, I think there'd be some less less uncertainty and chaos. So good work, PyCon. Thanks for keeping everyone updated. Todd went to an event, and this is a um, like massive Neo trellis using CircuitPython and controlling this tower of NeoPixels. This one I have to post up a little bit more. Someone made their own Circuit Python VS Code extension. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, and so it's in. You can you can just download and use it right away. Um, I'll link to it. Uh, there's a there's an update, um, but you can check this out. Um, we link to it in the newsletter and on our site. Uh, this is a cool little board. It's called the Commander. It's a 16 megabyte flash SD accelerometer, four button, nine LED uh, little device that runs Circuit Python. It uh, plays keystrokes off the SD card. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. It's like, it's, it's, you know, there's HID built into CircuitPython, so it's very easy to read files off of an SD card and then immediately type them out. It's actually like a 50 line code project. So I think this could be for like automating certain events if you want to plug it in and then say like, okay, I want to install software or set up a Chromebook or something. People use things like this to do that, automatic scripting tools. Okay, uh, Quick Feather. This is the Quick Logic EOS S3 Open Hardware Eval Board. This is from the Quick Logic Corp. It's an FPGA that was spotted at Embedded World by Drew. It had a Cortex M4 microcontroller, runs Zephyr in Feather format. Check this out. It'll be coming out soon. And Looks cute. also check out Awesome Feather on GitHub. You can just search for that. There's also a horse named Awesome Feather. No relation to our Awesome Feather list, but it is kind of cool. It should be called Quick Feather. Yeah. The quickest horse. Okay, this is neat. This is a ritual mask of Predator. So they okay. use this is what it is. So they made this on their own, and it uses the monster mask uh, or the Halloween eye inside of there, so you can see. This. Okay, great. Okay, next up, <laughs> um, there was a really good article about um, Python as a programming language. Cool thing is, um, it's now number two. Um, Python wasn't singled out in these rankings um, from Redmonk. Um, that often because it just keeps growing and it's steady and this time it's a little different for this quarter um, it spent four years in fourth place and then it jumped up to third place three years ago until this month for the first time in history of these rankings which began in 2012 there is a non-java or javascript entry in the number two slot that is python so it was javascript then java yeah then python then like looks like c plus plus c yep css Yep. Okay, see Rust catching up there. Okay. Go Rust! And last up, if you want to celebrate Women's History Month and Women's History Day, there is a really cool uh, workshop that the Beirut Digital District is doing, and it's part of the Beirut uh, Hackspace. And you can, if you happen to be in the area, <laughs> you're there, but you can also probably catch it online. Uh, we link to that and more. And that is Python on Harvard this week. Yay! All right. Okay. <laughs>